All right. Somebody want to check and see if we're live? You're looking live to me. You are not live yet. Might, might have a... Uh, live now. Okay. Yay! Congratulations. You get to continue working with that gimmick. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I could help. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. When we last left, our intrepid heroes had had a bit of combat up on the third floor in the nursery, um, firing off bullets and such around children, always a good thing. Um, <laughs> terrified a nanny. Bjorn fired his cannon inside and put a massive hole over the floor, but he hit the possessed doll. Um, that got destroyed, but the Heck Whisperer snuggled underneath the bed and disappeared. Somebody got distraught. Who was that? Was that Banny? I got put out of sorts by the doll. I'm stupefied. Lethargic. This is Rob. It's stupefied, lethargic, and then the doll has taken away my voice. No, the attic was for that. It took away your voice. The doll's been blown away, and a little gem went crawling out of its right. shattered insides. Right. But you have no voice. The attic was for nowhere to be found. Oh. And, and Banny was. Banny. Right. And so the two things I remember that we were hanging on was Banny literally was. Trying to say smash said green gem, and we were wondering after the incredible loud cannon that means that we can't hear each other if that would make anybody wake up. The only awake person that you saw on this floor were the children and the nanny. And the nanny went running back to her room when the gunfire started. Other than that, you got no servants. Nobody has come running to all this gunfire. So we kind of believe that the house is under some kind of a spell in general uh, since we've come back, right? There's this kind of suspended animation feel about the whole manor. You briefly saw Padraig and the colonel, who looked puffy from sleep, said that they had fallen asleep. Right. I have not seen them since. They were down on one of the lower floors. Hmm. The house is still quiet except for the whimpering of children is quieting and the ticking of a clock. Which we can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You do hear that metallic shunk noise as Bjorn reloads one of his shells. Vaguely over the loud he pulls out his pneumatic jack and drops the shell into his pile. <laughs> Yes. You now have minus one hearing loss permanent. It's right. handheld howitzer. Yeah. Okay, I still can't talk, so I'm... Um, That's all right. We have no voice. So while he's doing the reloading, uh, I guess I'll just... Again, I know Danny was looking at the dam. Robin's going for another one of his bags that he's carrying. I want to pull out nut and show it to uh, Blanca. All right, we go approach the Viking, reach up under his coat, you grab a nut. <laughs> <laughs> he says, I knew you would come around. <laughs> you now have one Viking. What do you do? Blanca, the last thing you had was the doll in your hands that rotated its head around and hit you with some horrific darkness. You threw it out into the hallway and I shot it like ski. <laughs> well, after lightning strike. From yes, after you lightning struck it. What is your action, Blanca? I'm looking for a nut. It's not one of yours. Uh, <laughs> Did so, somebody write down exactly what Bjorn was supposed to have been carrying? Yep. All right, so you go rooting through one of his bags looking for one of the nuts, which is right. supposed to do what for you? That was supposed to take care of curses. Very well. I, I, you know, Robin, I don't think I got my lightning off. 
off because wasn't it just ready? Did I actually cast it? You blasted it. I watched the, I watched the stream. <laughs> oh. Well, good. You've and caught up. You did that. Then he, he, bam, and now he can't do anything. Oh, you know, I'm looking at my sheet, and I am down a number of hit points. So, oh, yeah. clearly, I tried to blast somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got hit with that chilling darkness, I think. Yeah, I'm not in great shape right now. Um, so, what... Doll in the hallway. Is it just in pieces now? Yeah, it's just shredded. And he's holding the gem that was inside of it. Um, Robin is digging around in Bjorn's pack and pulls out a nut. Are you going to eat the nut, Robin? Curse. Bjorn looks at you and says, no. I don't know how to play that game. <laughs> <laughs> She hopes that Blanca is more reading than she hasn't talked. <laughs> yeah, no, I, she hasn't said anything since, well, it's been over a minute, which is unusual. <laughs> She's just going to go ahead and chew up his nut. It's unusual. <laughs> if she has any curses, assuming that it's fey magic, it works. You chew on the nut. The pine nut? What kind of nut is that? It's, it's a hazelnut. Delicious. <laughs> and your curse of self-loathing loathing is still too strong for the nut. So I, as far as I know, it just didn't work. So I try to say something again. and uh, Nothing comes out but your breath. So, so as far as I'm concerned, then it's not a curse. <laughs> Are you going to allow Banny to pocket the, the gem and go with it at a later time? He was going to try to smash it. Literally, he wanted to smash it. That was his last action. I don't know that he's got a whole lot of smashing type tools. But your that... Viking offers up the axe. Yeah, not, not the Viking. <laughs> Banny puts it on the floor and Bjorn cracks it open like a skull and it shatters into lots of little green pieces. Hmm. Is there anybody besides us to witness this? No, just the four of you in the hallway. The children are no longer whimpering in the nursery, and now it's just yourselves and the tick of the clock. Robin, what? what's wrong with your voice? She pulls out uh, from her jacket her journal and her little stub pencil and starts scribbling real quick. I can't talk. Resist this urge <laughs> to enjoy this moment. <laughs> she begins finding Blanca's face. <laughs> <laughs> she threatens, she doesn't. Um, what, what do you think caused it? Point to the paper again. Sorry, I, I was really distracted when all this happened. I didn't see what happened. She writes leather doll. So it occurs? Um, I'm, I'm not really good with curses at all. I, um, grab, oh, I'm, I'm spent. I don't have anything left. I was going to drain my bonded item, but but I did that already. <laughs> you did to get the to get the extra lightning, yeah. Oh, damn it! We just got to get you out of here. I mean, we can get you fixed when we're done. We got to find some other somebody else in this house who's not slumbering or dazed or in some way. She she runs back into the nursery to look at the children who have gone completely silent. They're Are all they three sleeping? They're just asleep. They aren't, like, frozen. No, nope, they look like they're asleep. All right, she comes out looking relaxed. You've poked them to see if they really are. <laughs> the, 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 before you wake the children, cast a detect magic on them. I just want to understand if they're under some kind of spell. You cast a detect magic on um, roll your spell cast DC. Random. Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, that's two plus. <laughs> <laughs> we brought our A game today. Yeah, that's an 18. You know, if there's an enchantment, it's probably too powerful for you to even pick up. That's fair. Yeah. Um, I don't have any real medical ability to speak of. Um, they, they they look like they're breathing normally, sleeping normally. I mean, I've watched people sleep for. Yeah, they look like they're slumbering. Um, it's odd because they were all three shrieking and wailing a few minutes ago with all the gunfire going on. And this is when you do see the bullet hole in the side of the bassinet. Um, not sure. Robin, re a regular Kobe in mine now. <laughs> okay. I get her some chalk to put on her face. <laughs> get in the box. Okay, now put the rule. Now walk down uh, But the children are asleep now and they really have no reason to be asleep all that chaos. The gunshot came up through the floor earlier. It, it passed harmlessly through all of this. Is that what we understood? You don't see any holes in the floor um, in the carpeting of this room. So as you suspected, the space between floors is probably pretty pretty deep and pretty dense. Um, if there, there had been timbers or even stone supports, it would have gone nowhere. It was the bullets that fired into the nursery by the French girl punched through the uh, bathroom. <clears throat> well, I, I recommend we back out of here. Things seem calm for the moment. Let's investigate the rest of the house. I want to make sure the reason we're here is still the reason we're here. And anybody else who might have been collateral uh, is, is looked into. Uh, from, we're, up, we're on the third floor? Yes, you are. Uh, move over. Is is there like a balcony that looks down, or do we need to go downstairs before we get a grander view? Uh, you can look over the uh, railing of the stairwell mm -hmm. and see all the way down to the front entry foyer. Okay. Um, from that perch, I yell across the house, is anyone awake? Hello? Roll up perception. You're only looking for a 17. Natch. Wasted. <laughs> But you're everything. What you do see is down at the first floor foyer at the main doors, mm -hmm. one of those throne-like side chairs, there's a uniformed footman asleep in the chair. And nearby, lying on the floor, is the boy everyone called Buttons, a little age. And he's sleeping, actually curled up with his thumb in his mouth. What hour is it? Yeah, and hear a yell in response from somewhere either on the second floor or probably the first floor. Um, it's kind of a cracking crotchety shriek. Okay. Alright, let's stick together and go down and investigate the first floor. I don't know if that's a friend or foe, but let's not get separated. Robin, grab your arm. But what? Pulls you back towards Bjorn and Roots through, grabs uh, two more of those uh, pink berries and gives them to the city looking teenage girl. <laughs> These are healing, we assume, right? All right. D20 for the first bear. <laughs> of course. Wow. That's why you got two. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't do much. <laughs> And ones. Oh my gosh, this thing is so all over the place. Let's just get middle of the road. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, which, right. which dice are you rolling? The gravity dice. Okay. Okay, it is it, it is per perfectly random. Yeah, are you going to eat the second berry? Yeah, that one felt kind of good. It had a nice taste to it. <laughs> it, it, was, uh, it was oversold, though. This thing's not healing. One of your She has, she has four left. We've used now four. Okay. I use my portion and I use her portion. If you like to eat. Thank you, Robin. That that actually feels a great deal better. 
better. Um, I, I think. Anyway, um, Robin, I know you can't talk, but I would feel better if you were on point. No, it takes point. Uh, I put a hand behind her and move down the stairs. Call back to Bjorn. Stay close. And are you reloaded? Yeah. Bjorn's tromping and clanking down the stairs behind you, saying, Did I mention that I slayed not only a Jabberwock, but the king of the red caps? Did I say this to you? Um, we will put it in some kind of anthology later so no one forgets. Robin looks back dirty at him. <laughs> <laughs> you guys stop hitting on each other. We've got work to do. I will give you some berries later. <laughs> work way down to the first floor. Um, Turn down to the first floor. And around. immediately... A couple of sleeping servants. One is a maid sleeping in a chair. Uh, the other one's another footman just stretched right out on the carpet. Any tracks or anything like that? 25. What you, well, you actually do see tracks. You see two long lines kind of weaving their way side by side down the carpet. And they end at an old man in a wheelchair who slowly turns in the middle of the hallway and you see that it's Bruce Ismay bearded wild hair shaking a fist um, missing his leg staring with uh, runny eyes and you all see the standing two or three feet behind him is a bluish white woman with her two bush white children and the entire hallway smells of seawater. Oh shit. They're staring at you over the top of Ismay. And he is muttering something. But you, you can't hear him you're too far away. Fanny said something about haunting. He was haunted. This looks a lot like that. Uh, move from somewhere forward as the temperature in the hallway starts to drop you all hear what sounds like um, distant screams and splashing it seems to fill the entire corridor move up to where Ismay is in his wheelchair without regard for ghosts just get up to where he is and I stay in front of uh, Blanca yeah I'm pushing you from behind <laughs> <laughs> the two of you with Bjorn lumbering behind move to the wheelchair the ghosts behind the chair just stand there staring at you it's probably 30 degrees colder now that you're right up on old man you can see that he's shuddering a little bit and there is just a tiny little bit of frost and ice in his beard where he's been drooling and it's frozen. His whole body is trembling. And now that you're up, up close, you he's not looking at you, he's looking through you, but you hear him muttering, you couldn't have the classes mixing, but they didn't open the gates. I don't know why, but we couldn't have the classes mixing. Get between him and the apparitions to block his view of that. Try to find a moment of clarity. He's facing forward. Uh -huh. They're behind him, so he can't see them. Oh, okay. He's looking at whatever it is that he sees in his mind or in his memory. But he looks like a frail old man who's just tormented by the past. And he holds up his fist and he shakes it. He said, we couldn't have have them mixing. The first class would never permit it. They couldn't mix. And he extends his hand to you. Grab it, not holding it, but just kind of that nursing way, put it back in his lap. You feel, or you actually see something brass sticking out of the top of his fist. What is he holding? He's holding a key, 
big brass key with a round plate at the end that says 3C stairwell. This is how they locked the gate. Turn to Robin. Take take the key and the lock if you let me pry it from his hand. It's just the key, that's all he has. Okay. He lets you have it. As he does, the apparitions fade into a wall. The temperature starts to come up. And it looks like he goes to sleep. I wonder if they're invested in this artifact somehow tied to it, bound, bound to it. Turn, um, we're in the main hall, right? Yeah. I just, I'm gonna throw this thing away, but I mean, that might make it worse. Uh, Robin points, we're in the second floor or first? First floor. No, the first floor. So, wasn't the, um, the room with the Titanic portrait, was that on the second floor? Second floor study. Right. She points up. She points up that way, just looking like up the stairs. We've already been in the study. I mean, we, that's where we took Excalibur or whatever the hell that damn sword was. She, she indicates the key. Who's carrying that sword right now? Is that still Bjorn? Yeah. Yeah. But the the key belongs to the locks to lower decks. The people who drowned. On the Titanic, this was part of what locked them from coming up. He said that classes couldn't mix. He or someone made that choice. Maybe him because he's holding the key. I mean, that's certainly a reason to be haunted. Damn, old man. She, she uh, points downwards then. I don't imagine this does anything inside the manor house. It, it wouldn't make sense according to what he's saying and the reading on that. It's it, it's uh what does it say again? Three C stairwell. Yeah. That, that sounds like a ship designation. Why does he have it? How? I mean, if, unless if he was the one who locked the chains around the steerage that's the only way he could have that i mean on an, on a ship that's sinking if he went down and locked those gates made his way back up to the upper decks got onto a lifeboat that's why he has this key i mean and, and he could have given the command to someone beneath him who did that and returned the key to him but either way it was at his hand right his direction We can't save him from his ghosts. That seems like almost a deserved fate. She looks at him sadly and nods. It's too bad his whole family is suffering for that one decision. Where, where is... Wheel him, do we know where his, his room is? Yeah, we could ask a servant, but they're all safe. <laughs> Bruce Ismay. Um, I think it's time to go look after my friend. Um, Constance, uh, let's go to her room. We'll leave him here. I'll keep the key. Is there a fire going or anything? In where? Here in this entry room or anywhere no, nearby? No, there's no fireplaces here. Uh, okay. Any, uh... Yeah, entry hallway. So is it radiator heat or something? I just want to push them against something near something that has any kind of radiating heat. Um, if there are, they're very discreetly kind of concealed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you just going to leave Ismay here in the middle of the hallway? Yeah. I was, yeah. I was going to turn to the side of it and I was trying to put him someplace that was a little bit warm since he was definitely in the, the 
thick of the coldest of it. Well, okay. with the ghost gone, the temperature rose. He should be fine. Crinkle, crinkle, frost, frost. His <laughs> <laughs> beard is starting to thaw out a bit as he sleeps. Robin looks for you to lead you to uh, go to Cos go to Constance's room. Is she there? Or is she sleeping? Uh, you go to Constance's room, and she is indeed sleeping. Very, very deep. We are in some kind of a frozen state. The whole household. What have triggered this? I mean, we heard the noises in the nursery. We've dispatched so many of the denizens that could have caused this. What time is it? Um, are you looking at house clocks or are you looking at your watches? Um, ask Banny what time it is. I know he wears a watch. Um, it looks like it's about 3 a.m. Meanwhile, the house clock says... Yeah. <laughs> you can see them all over the place. The house yeah. clocks are all at midnight. Uh, Ticking, nothing's moving. Uh, we are frozen somehow. Is it us that's... I mean, they'd be in real time, and we're the ones who are out. Go, go back outside. You go out into the night? Yep. In the front or the back? Mm, the front. You go out front. Um, no vehicles out here. Just the nighttime. Uh, um, the house is frozen in time. Is nature as well? Uh, is moon moving at all? Uh, the, I mean, is... Is there anything else that suggests the, the leaves are moving? You see some owls moving about. You hear night noises outside. Oh, I saw them breathing. You see clouds moving across the sky. This does feel like the presence of the unseen court. <laughs> Robin just looks expectantly at Blanca, like, solve this. <laughs> I don't know that there's magic that I can do that will undo this moment. There is something, there's a latch we must unlatch for this to flow free again. I'm just not seeing it. The children are in their pants. Everybody, everything went quiet when screaming stopped. Is that correct? Yes. We entered this, but the, the servants and staff were already asleep before we right. got to the nursery. Yeah. The nursery was the aberration. You did see the nanny and haven't seen her since. Right. You briefly saw the drag and the caramel and haven't seen them since. Okay. So there were people awake in the house. Granted, it's early in the morning. But since the children have gone quiet, the whole household has gone quiet. It was almost like that was the moment, right? And then you heard like a hag-like scream downstairs. <laughs> That wasn't, that couldn't have been uh, Ismay. I mean. <laughs> Where are you hiding? Call into the hallway. Show yourself. You've gone back to the house? Yep. Is everybody down in that vestibule? Yeah. You... Robin, you don't have a problem hearing anything. Now you've identified where some of the vents are for the central heating because you hear your voice coming out of one of the vents that says, come play with me. Does so anybody Blanca, does Blanca hear this? Everybody hears it. Okay. Somebody has your voice. Uh, the furnace room. Let's go. I don't know if we know where it is, but follow. It's going to be down near the <laughs> servants area, right? Yeah. <laughs> going to go down the stairs to the servants area? Yep. Any oh, another berry. 
You've been down here a couple of times now. Some of us. So you're familiar with where the quarters are, where the uh, common area is, where the showers are, um, and the kitchens, but there's another wing off to the east that you have not explored. Um, you know that the female servants' quarters are in that direction, but you don't know what else. Robin will be down that direction. I'm sure followed closely. Um, you almost immediately come upon a very narrow, steep stairwell that you have not seen on any other floor. Uh, and it goes up, and there's a hallway directly ahead of you, and you are near a very heavy uh, wooden board covered in Baroque carvings with a big brass key plate. Maybe there was a key. <laughs> she she offered her hand. I hand it to you. <laughs> She'll give it a shot. It was your idea. You, you follow no. through. No. It does not fit. Okay. She pulls. You're going to try the door. Yeah. If it doesn't open, we have a Bjorn. <laughs> door secured. <laughs> motion, motion to the Viking. He gives the door a boot. Dot boot. Yeah, rolls 18 with an athletics 34. Mm. He kicks open the door with a thunderous crash, does irreparable damage to it. <laughs> it is a broken door. Yon is a dimly lit wine cellar, floor to ceiling. It looks like these folks know their wine. Flagstone floor and it goes in and continues off to the east. Uh, Robert will take point. I'll fall right behind. We'll continue down until we find something more interesting. Is enough light I can see, or do I have to pull out a torch? You can see. Okay. Um, the lights are spaced out. Green glass shades over each one. The place is immaculately clean. No dusty bobs here. Um, at the far end is a single door that does not look like it's locked and it is standing slightly ajar. Any sound from it? It's quiet in there. I'll peek through the open way. It looks like it opens into a hallway that goes off to your left, a doorway to your immediate right, right and a doorway directly ahead of you. I'm listening for the sound of any kind of, you know, boiler or furnace or anything. Okay. Not hearing anything at this point. Mm. Any further away from the cold storage of the line. I'll try the left first. Left is up a corridor that travels about 20 feet to uh, what looks like a stone wall. But you clearly see the archway of a door. If somebody was trying to hide a door in the stone wall, they did a very poor job of it. But it's all sealed off. You just see an outline in the stone mm -hmm. wall. Looks like a big, big upside down U. You touch it, make sure it's real stone. <laughs> real stone. And you feel it give. Oh. Push harder. You push harder and it swings in and pivots to the left. You immediately get hit with uh, a deep, deep cold. Uh, the musty smell of decay and darkness. Hello. You hear an echo in the darkness beyond. Do you think this goes to the furnace? <sighs> this is an inconvenient time for you to be taciturn. <laughs> Probably like, every time we want her to shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> Robin indicates back behind Bjorn. Doesn't feel like this is the right way. 
Yeah, this feels much like a distraction, but perhaps it is the way. Or check it out. Turns it on, look inside, is this the crypt? You look inside, it absolutely is the crypt. Okay. And it extends, it's, it's vaulted with, with like ribbed supports running the length of it. And it travels considerable distance down to the east. And it is absolutely filled with slab-opt crypts. And it's only down here. It's quite chilly. You can't even see at the end of your flashlight how deep it goes. Here is the first time you've seen rats. And they go scurrying away from your light. Call out again. Hello! You hear your voice echoing. We heard your voice coming through the vents. That couldn't have come from here. This was behind a stone wall. You don't see any plumbing, no heating pipes. This place looks old, old, old. Probably back in the 1600s, 1700s. Robin tries to start pulling it closed. Is it just simply. It looks like you would probably have to be on the inside pushing it push. from inside the crypt. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I peeked at my book to see if I know anyone to close it without touching it. <laughs> um, We're not superstitious. No. Yeah. I'm not going to be leaving open crypt door behind. It's the kind of thing that people who play D&D would work on. <laughs> oh, damn it, damn it, damn it. Just, if we can just, just unfreeze this house, we can get the hell out of here and end this vacation. Or, <laughs> For the, the record, the, never go on vacation. <laughs> uh, uh, I have a feeling you'll go again. The accommodations were spectacular. <laughs> Tennis, got to go on a, a, a fox, fox hunt. hunt. Yes, all manner of opulence. <laughs> oh, okay, we're back. Uh, so, I mean, let's. Does Bjorn have anything like he can hook down the door wall? Do you want to go in and shut the door from inside and then find another way out? No. Why do you worry? I'm at the back of the group. Don't worry, Robin. If anything scary comes out, I will deal with it. She rolls her eyes. He waves <laughs> his glowing grates around. <laughs> Just like I have everything on this vacation. <laughs> uh, only Robin could talk. We're going to go back towards the first entry that they came into this. The door that was to your right or the door that was across the hall from the wine cell? I'm going to try the door to the right. It opens easily and you immediately hear the mechanical sounds of what is probably a boiler room. It is also dimly lit. No glass shades in here, just bare bolts hanging from the ceiling. It's a pretty big room and at there's doors in each wall there's one to your immediate right there's one across the way from you there is a um, garage sized door down at the far left there's an archway further down from that and uh, the ceiling is just covered in um, dark steam pipes and the boilers in here there's multiple boilers looks like four of them are huge and very noisy, very warm. Well, that's a nice, nice turn. Um, push into the room. <laughs> uh, we're not being quiet. I want to make noise equal to or louder the boiler as we come in. Uh, I want the, the shout 
how to make that happen. I want the attention of whatever is in here. If it can overcome the sound of this, make noise up through the ductways. Um, I don't. I don't like this cat and mouse thing. I want. I want to face it. Whatever it is, let's be done. You hear what sounds like child sobbing from somewhere in between the boilers. Ready in action. Okay. <laughs> if this child shows any malevolence to me, it's going to eat lightning. <laughs> there are four boilers with a three dark spaces between them. Using Robin, right. using Robin as a human shield, I move forward. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? Anyway, so she's sleeping. You're just watching with you. the back and watching the front. He's got the sword in one hand and he's got the Yeti in the other. He should really be up front, but... I know. He can shoot over us. It's okay. He's not quite sure why the mage is, is leading, but she's... She's a shield maiden, though. She has to be blooded sooner or later. <laughs> well, it's probably going to be Robin's blood that's covered in. <laughs> she, uh, Ro Robin uh, uh, taps the lock on the side. What? What? Look for. Look behind us? She points to. Uh, uh, um, oh, it's back. She points over to Bjorn. Robin and Blanca, I need you both to make a will save. Already? But the night is so young. We haven't even had any drink yet. Oh. Oh, don't. I that roll. I'm afraid to grab that random die anymore. Uh, 31 for Robin. Uh, what kind of name did you say? It's a will save. Uh, you will. Uh, Even Bjorn got 31. 28. 28. Um, the boiler room is filled with unnerving, bitter sobs that echo off the walls, off the pipes. Um, they are louder than the steam pipe machinery that's going on in here. And they are, they sound like the pitiful wailing of a lost child. One, or are you saying lots? Well, it's echoing, it seems to be from everywhere. It could be ten of them, but you don't know how many lost children there are, or if there's even a lost child. Do we all seem to be with our wits about us? We seem to be. It's just unnerving, it's disturbing. Come forth, child. The sobbing goes away, and you hear a little girl's voice say, They said I cried too much. They said I would have to stay there until I stopped crying. Won't you come play with me? Care it's child. not Robin's voice, though, right? It's not Robin's voice. It's the voice of a little girl. Not heard it before. Ask her to come forward. If she doesn't comply, compel her to throw a command spell. Um, do you have a uh, intimidate or a diplomacy? I do. My intimidation is terrible, but I will try it. You don't do diplomacy? Huh. Well, here's a good chance. Uh, it, it's a match plus four, so 24. <laughs> <laughs> you say, come forth, child, and between the third and fourth boilers, you see a skull peek out between them. It looks like the skull of maybe a dog or a wolf. It's only two and a half feet tall. It's dressed in the ready remains of a Victorian era child's nightgown. You see it's rubbing its claws back and forth. It has a small stuffed raggy bear clutched to its chest. Its hands turned into leathery mummify, mummified claws and you recognize this is the creature that hurt you and took your voice. They're kept uh, blocking insistently on the shoulder. You can't tell what's holding that skull 
wall atop of it. Um, it seems to have feet. You're not sure if they're bone or if they're bone shut into slippers. But it looks almost timid as it peeks around the corner at you. It's okay. You come forth. Even when I stopped crying, it didn't come with me. Well, that's behind you now. Come forth. Still just peeking. Let's have a look at you, young one. It starts to sob again. No, no, so no, no. no. We'll save. Please. Yeah, that's not, not exciting. Uh, 30. 22. And what is the stupefied condition? Oh, I already had errors <laughs> of rules. Minus one to any skill check. I may even armor skill check. I'm already suffering from Well, you're not alone. You hear a groan and a moan behind you. And you see that the Viking has taken a couple steps backward and actually burned his neck on a steam pipe. This kind of right to retreat from the creature. He looks like he's not entirely there. More so than normal. <laughs> uh, uh, so he takes a stat penalty to intelligence, wisdom, and charisma based checks based on the degree of stupefaction. Okay. He's stupefied one. Okay. Uh, Robin only got a 22. Is still stupefied one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Your, your original condition hasn't gone away. Um, Look back at his children. I didn't have any siblings growing up. I'm being an only child. All I know is the the insistence of, of a mother or father telling me how to behave when I was misbehaving. I will apply that same tone to this creature, along with a command spell. Come out here and stop crying now. And there's a will save, yes. Correct. Twenty-seven. Yeah, that's good enough. The creature begins screaming, and as her voice climbs, she starts screaming, "You're just like, like the others. You're just like others." And let's have a initiative, roll, please. Stupefied. Yeah. Oh, yes. God. Those of you that are stupefied, please make a note. I already made my note. <laughs> yeah. Woo wee. Uh, I get an eighteen. So one. Wait, is that the second? I want to check. So that would be intelligence, wisdom, and charisma based. Perception is wisdom based. Yes. Okay. So that's like a zero plus perception. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. And thing gets what the thing gets. It gets what the thing wants. You aren't sensing that it's going to be a problem. Uses <laughs> one of his actions to leap forward and he swings the great sword at it. Good call. Eighteen. Not quite mortalish. <laughs> but wait, wait, you rolled an eighteen though? Rolled an eighteen then. Uh, let's see. You're close to warplish. It's crit. He crits the thing when he's first strike. He does 19, and then we roll it twice, yes? Double it up, All right? He 
does 45 points of damage. Slashes to this thing. So it's like a Texas skull. <laughs> skull and like that. And a child and shift. Yeah, yeah, shift. It begins wailing and he swings his second time. That's not gonna do it. Misses with the second blow. The creature reacts to him. It bites with its little wolf jaws. 18, 33. It's not crit, but he, it bites Bjorn. His fortitude is epic. It's his best stat, and he saves against the bite. And then the creature lashes out with one of its leathery little claws, and 20s him. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Now he's had worse. It's just a flesh wound. <laughs> <laughs> Have his arms gone. Flesh. Get back, old boy. Chill. saves. You see, oh, I'm sorry, it's Will. He still saves. Um, you see what looked like a, and Robin, you've seen it, you see this ghostly breast start to come out of his throat, and then he gives it back in. Blanca, you are next. Um, Bjorn is right next to the creature. I'm far away from Bjorn. Ten feet, maybe. Haste. You haste biking? I, I, yes, I'd like to do more of that. A little bit more. <laughs> Keep doing that. You haste the biking. Uh, I use my last action to move between the, the boilers. I want to try to get behind it. Okay. Um, are you going to try to pass it? Not, not buy it, but maybe... If there's if there's visible space behind the boilers to kind of cut behind it from a different row. So when this prep school slips in, into the dirty space between boilers mm -hmm. and sees cobwebs and rats. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Steps in and I I shiver. I'm like that's that's not happening. I, I spiders and magnetia wear boulders, tamaracks. This yeah. whole bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that will that that will end my turn. The shiver. Yes. <laughs> Robin. Uh, great. Um, uh, um, trying to decide. Uh, so do I have their shot, or is, is the Viking make it so I really must move to be able to get a shot? Um, you can reposition, you can use a move, and okay. it'll be clear. That's right. I'm lethargic, which I thought meant I can't, can't find a dog on condition. I think it means that I lose one action. I thought that you did. That's the way you were playing last week, so you got two actions. Right. So I'm like, I'm like the exact opposite of your, and he gets four actions, I get two. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so I'll spend an action moving. I can't spend anything praying. I'm just going to draw shoot. Okay. Do I notice that Robin's moving really lethargically? Yeah, she's sluggish. So okay. is the Viking. Ever since Magnetia. 
I have I have another one, Rob. Hold tight. If we're still alive. Thirty to hit. It's a good thing that you were missing second because you didn't have a third. <laughs> well, he had to move. He had to move, move up with. He moved and swung and hit, but then also had him swing again, which he wasn't in time. How'd you roll, Rob? 30 hit. 30. You hit. What are you using? It's a little last slide. It's got a little doom action on it. Okay. But when you say doom action, what do you mean? Well, it means that... Um, what it hits wants to be closer to death. So essentially, if it was a creature that was put into a dying state, it would take one less dying state to kill it. It Do doesn't really have an effect against an entity. Do you classify that as a death effect? No. No. Doom just means that... It doesn't affect you when you're in dying. Right. It just means like instead of taking uh, five to get to death, it would take four. And I think but, you have to declare that, don't you, kid? Um, so I guess I can say I'm declaring it, but it doesn't matter because it's never mattered for an NPC. <laughs> it's kind of a useless thing for an NPC, but it's a boss, so maybe it does. I'm declaring it. Uh, <laughs> um, it's a boss. <laughs> it's a boss, baby! What level are we on? Anyway, it's just a regular old hit, so it's not even uh, anything in. That'll just do eight points of damage to it. High caliber cold iron. You do eight points of damage to it, and uh, the bullet punches through its nightgown. Your lets out a shriek of rage and swings the great sword again. Eighteen. Again. <laughs> Crits it again and shatters the creature's skull. It, it collapses into a pile of bone and rags. And as it does, you see hundreds of tiny little blue white phantoms flowing up and out of it, up through the ceiling, through the walls. One of them flows right into you, Rob, and you recover your voice. Oh, okay, it's good. good. <laughs> Waka, uh, do a perception, please. Nat. Of course. <laughs> Inconclusive rolls always get Nat. <laughs> Through the archway at the far end of this room, oh. you hear a phone ringing. What the hell? What? Without, without thinking, safety or self regard, just wander that direction. Any, do any effects drop off to the fight or lethargic? Yes, both of you are back to normal. Follow Blanca. I get restored to full speed. Blanca, you look through the archway. Um, what you see is a four-bay garage, each with its own wooden door. Um, very nice structure strategic lighting over each bay, and it looks like there's a classic automobile in each of the bays. You also see over by what looks like a mechanic's workbench is a big heavy black phone with something you've maybe seen once or twice. Um, it's a panel of buttons, and one of them is blinking each time the phone rings. Um, I remember when these things were brought into our household shortly after the manor was built, or at least upgraded. Wander over to the panel. Okay. <clears throat> I'm looking. So you've got a regular phone receiver, and um, the panel looks like no less than two, two dozen buttons. Blinking button. You push it. Pick the receiver. You pick up the receiver. You hear a woman's voice, hello. It sounds vaguely familiar. Roll up for some. 17 plus 11, 28. You 
do recognize this. Um, it's Lady Victoria Ismay, Constance's mother. Who's calling, please? No, it's uh, Lady Ismay. Looking for Constance or the Colonel? Uh, may I fetch him for you? Certainly. Where are you? Long. Look at the board. This is from her room. There are no other inside lines with. This looks to be an outside call. And you know that if you remember correctly, Lady Ismay, Constance's mother, is still in Lodinium taking care of her sick father. Just left it on the line. It's going to cost a fortune. <laughs> it's, it's up some urgency. Run along and fetch one of them, please. One moment. I don't know how to put this thing on hold. I just know how to push <laughs> buttons. I'll just set the receiver down. Don't fight again. Um, let's go upstairs. I think we're done here. So take a look at the cars. See if there's a key box nearby. Um, there are four cars. And uh, because of your upbringing, uh, roll perception if you can land an 18 you can recognize all four of them uh 19 plus perception of 11. uh you see that there is a cream color 1900 fashini roadster a silver 1902 maybach roadster convertible a smooth gray 1927 cadillac and lasalle and black 1911 Stutz Bear Cat with Rumble <laughs> All of them are polished so highly you can shave in them if you were shaving. Well, she'd be shaving legs. Uh, think back to our training school while we were going through Noctrichter and the night we had in Mom's uh, Roadster. <laughs> That's the one, Brad. <laughs> We need to get stairs. I'm hoping this, the household has changed. Maybe this call is important to someone. Let's find a Colonel. You, they, they, he was going out to, to try to get someone. I don't know. Let's just go upstairs and see if anything's changed. Okay. As you make your way back, back into the other half of the cellar, um, you see Mr. Joyce House Butler. Um, walking slowly down the main corridor, rubbing at his eyes, uh, looking like he's just tied on. on. As soon as he sees the four of you, he does his best to straighten to his proper uh, presentment, holds out a hand to keep falling down, pushes at his tuxedo. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, how may I assist you? There's an incoming call in the garage if you could uh, summon um, the master of the house there's a call for him oh dear one, one moment and he hurries past you heads off in the direction of the garage um You're hearing noises from the kitchen noises from the hallway it sounds like the house is starting to wake up and the servants are horrified that they've all gone to sleep in different rooms of the house as opposed to their quarters. Is there a house clock nearby to get? There's house clocks everywhere. Did the time jump to 3 a.m. Or, or is it? No, it caught up. Okay. I'll do that. He has to go catch up. <laughs> Give me Mike. How are you feeling? So, using, uh, that, using that chiseler? Is that a chiseler? This pen. Mechanical pencil. Oh. <laughs> Picture of Twizzler. I got a cigar. <laughs> I can pull a cigar. We really have to, you know. Does does, does Cornell smoke cigars? Uh, you know, I don't think Cornell. Uh, well, well, let me think about that just for a second. He he is a cigar smoker. He likes to see how. It, makes a look. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to pay for the high-end cigars. So he's, 
It's the getting mugs. It's the McCurgan. Yeah, the yeah. McCurgan union pieces. The people sick of the guy. There was a big deal about the McCurgan union cigars there. Sorry, I'm trying to remember the, the uh, yeah, the Turkish cigar. You're in the basement. So we we yeah. passed the uh, the butler upstairs. I, I need to go check on Collins. I, that I mean, she's the whole reason we're here. So let's get back and make sure he's okay. Okay. I, I don't even wait for Robin to go on point. I push past her and. Towards the room, like it's Christmas morning. <laughs> I watch her run. So it seems like only the servants are out and about, um, looking a little, little shaken and rattled that they went to sleep wherever they happened to be. They're making themselves scarce very quickly. Robin, you get back to Constance's room and she's asleep. Well, actually, Blanca was going to go there. I was going to be... I'm sorry, I'll say Robin and Blanca. Yeah, Blanca. Go into the room. Make my way over to her. She's resting peacefully. She's still sleeping in the way she was before. Make her awake. Constance. Constance. She comes awake, looks at you, rolls over, yawns and stretches. And says, oh, here's Blanca. God, the most strangest. I didn't mean to wake you. It's only three, oh, almost four in the morning. Um, it's oh. a few hours before breakfast, but I just wanted to assure you that both going to end up with lungs in our face. I'm just going to sleep at once. <laughs> I dreamed that you put an end to the creature that was tormenting me. You're such a hero. Oh, she yawns again. Constant. I also dreamed the unicorn. Go back to sleep and dream of unicorns. I am going to update the staff as to instructions, but my friends and I will be leaving in the morning. Oh, do you not wish to stay this summer? I would love to, but I have work to return to, and you have a season to prepare for. Well, uh, it won't be until next season. Mm. Do you not wish to stay for breakfast? Oh, we will of course have breakfast, but uh, after that we will be returning to the the, uh, the airship. Splendid. Then I will see you in the morning. She grabs the cover and rolls over. As expected. Make my way back to the rest of our, our group. The rest of the group has been approached by a footman who looks like he may be in need of a shave. And the footman looks between Robin and the Viking settle on Robin and says, Mr. Joyce sent me to fetch you to the study. There is a very urgent phone call for Miss Bess. For Miss Bess. Um, yes, that she, is what he said. She can be found in um, Mando Constance's uh, room. He is about to turn away when Miss Bess comes trotting down the hallway toward you, Flipman gives you a bell, dismisses the help, and uh, says, there's a phone call for you in the study, Miss Bess. Most urgent. Me? Look bemused and take, take me to the phone, please. He takes you to the first floor study, which is next to the billiard room. It's the place wonderful books and titanic memorabilia everywhere. There is no sign of Bruce Ismay. And he, uh, Mr. Joyce is standing there next to a table with a fun cradle is off, is off the cradle and he immediately hand you the hands. Take the phone and look at him until he leaves the room. He and the footman immediately leave. Hello? Blanca, it's the same woman that you were yes. speaking to. Uh, this is Blanca. Blanca, it's Victoria 
Ismay, how are you, darling? Uh, I, uh, what's her last name? Oh, sorry. Miss Ismay. Mrs. Ismay. Um, yes, it's great to hear your voice. How are you? Uh, I'm well. Um, yeah, I do have a very important message for you, but I might ask you to tell the master of the house that whoever's answering his phones is terribly, terribly rude. He needs a servant. Yes, it's yes. So hard to find good help. He's, he's We've had good Great treatment since we've been here. It must just be an oversight. Darling, your mother uh, called an hour ago hmm? asking if I could get in touch with you. And I knew that you were somewhere with, with, with Constance hmm? in the house in Magnet. Um, she, she seemed quite insistent and uh, rather frazzled. It was quite unusual for Lady Bess. Hmm. She's asking she, for a quick return? Uh, clearer than you might think, she said that uh, you and your companions are needed at the castle immediately. Um, that you are to make, make all haste to the Dublin Commodore. Um, she asked me to arrange tickets for four, which I've done. That you are to go immediately to Zurich and catch an express train over and then home. She seemed quite, quite insistent. I told her I didn't know if you could possibly get back that quickly, and that I, I thought you would be summering, but I oh. agreed with an old friend that I would pass on the message. Well, Constance seems to be in a much better state now, and I th think perhaps her son will go more according to the plans she had anticipated, and maybe a time for her to have more independence. And so my friends and I will, of course, obey my mother's wishes. Oh, very well. I'll certainly consider everything you've just said about it. <laughs> uh, nice to speak with you. Thank you for the message. Yes. Take care, darling. Click. <laughs> <laughs> I'll relay the information to my crew and uh, let them know we're leaving with haste. We will get breakfast before we speed away. I would love to take one of those vehicles from garage, but I'll do this cordially and wait to be driven. <laughs> you uh, are you going to dine down in the servants? Um, yeah, I, I, we're not going to for the formal breakfast. Uh, uh, when we're finished, I will say farewell to Constance and, and the Colonel. Uh, Mr. Joyce wakes up to cook. He puts on a spread for you. He, he says that he will summon the Colonel immediately if that's your wish. And uh, do you need Mr. Kalarnan to drive you to the station? Ring him immediately. While you're dining, um, the colonel comes in. He's in a robe. Looks like he uh, woke up in uniform, dished it all along with the weapons, and went to properly. And he looks very puffy and sleepy. Um, yes, yes. What, what can I do? Right. Rise to meet Upstairs in the salon or the gathering room instead of here. Rise from the serving area in the service quarters. Go over and give him a big hug like a niece or granddaughter would. <laughs> we have we have to go now. Um, I will say farewell to Constance, but I think things should run more naturally around here going forward. Quite right. It's been a been several days quite a bit of tomfoolery hasn't it <laughs> so glad you could pop in uh, come see us again and thank you for uh, whatever it is that you did <laughs> <laughs> um happy to be of service my lord quite right um and uh, he looks over at your I'll have that. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> get to keep it. it <laughs> takes the sword back from him. Yes, I'm glad you were able to put it to good use, Chuck. Pleasant journey. Colonel leaves. Any sign of the egg? Any sign of uh, Bruce Ismay? Uh, no, you have not seen Bruce Ismay, and you don't see anyone other than house servants, other family members. Blanca, when you stop by, 
conferences to say goodbye. She, she's snoring lightly. She comes around, waves a hand, with a big, okay, you can come lead out kind of hand. I, goes back to sleep. I will look for some stationery in her room and just write her a little note. Uh, thank you. Yes, stationary. Thank you for the invitation. Had a wonderful time. Uh, explored every aspect of the manor and the grounds and found it most curious. Looking forward to seeing you in the near future. Your friend, Blanca. As you're putting it on the desk, you feel a tap, tap, tap at your boot. Is it the nose? It's the small man with the top hat and the bulldog. He's got two carpet bags with him, which oh, yeah. he picks one and says, well, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Hack him in the barn. <laughs> I can get you as far as Belfast. From there, you'll have to find your way onto a proper airship if you wish to get back to Iceni. We are going via Chromador back to Burgundy. What's a Chromador? <laughs> It is a conveyance of instantaneous machinery that takes one from point A to point B. Is Burgundia near Cornwall? Not even remotely. <laughs> well, I've overstayed my welcome here. Um, you and your friend can move unseen among humans, is that correct? You've seen us plenty. Um... In fact, you both surprised us. On numerous occasions, so I'm not terribly stealthy. But so, so many terrible and frightful things have happened. The first world has moved away from this world. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> but I am still a man of a country. Just for hmm? Are there dairies? Yes. Is there milk? Indeed. And whiskey? <laughs> Small shiny buttons. Oh, you've got to make him our castle home. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <sighs> Bixby, Barnabas, would you join us on this journey? Oh, what do you think, Barnabas? <laughs> yes, I'd be happy to. <sighs> Don't take up much space in your bag. I open up my, my uh, satchel. Can the two of you at least act like luggage? Certainly. The dog leaps in, begins rooting and nosing around, and Barnabas and uh, Bixby climbs the side of it. Be careful not to damage delicates. Drops inside. Is, <laughs> is Barnabas bag trained? Oh, I'm sure that he won't do anything that he won't claim later. <sighs> I don't want to know. Pulls it up. Go find Robin, Bjorn, and Fanny, and the driver. They're ready to go. The driver's waiting out front. Um, Mr. Joyce gives you a very formal farewell. Thank you. Everyone on the estate thanks you for you there's a sign of the drag, uh, Robin gives particular attention to say farewell to drag and Marta he's about. Um, none of the family is here. The drag is not here. It's just Mr. Corn by the limousine and Mr. Joyce uh, giving you a very warm goodbye and a thank you. Um, Mr. For drink, would you? No, he's not here. Or who's here? The Mr. Joyce, the boy. Mr. Joyce, will you pass a message to, to Lyle for me? Certainly. If he's ever in Burgundia. Tell them to look up. Yes, I'll be uh, happy to pass along that message. Thank you. A little poke in the side from Robin. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I'll be right back. Two moments.
John.